All right, guys. So in the last video, we created our virtual environment. So we have a folder I called mine BTRE project. And then my virtual environment is called VENV. And to activate that on a Mac, we do source and then we do we go into our VENV folder and then uh, bin and then activate. Okay, and on Windows, it's going to be VENV source slash activate dot bat and you don't put the source in front of it. Okay, so now that we're we're inside the environment, we know that because of this right here, we want to install Django. Okay, so if we do a pip freeze right now, you can see there's nothing there. So let's do a pip install Django. Okay, and this is only going to install it inside of our environment. That's the beauty of this is it doesn't install it globally. It's just in our, our environment. So now if I do a pip freeze you'll see we have django and its dependency of pi tz all right now to to create a django project we want to run a uh, we want to use a, a special cli uh, program called django admin so if we say django dash admin help you'll see that we have a bunch of different commands here we have stuff to to deal with like migrations in the database Um, SQL stuff, uh, start app. Now, I'm going to explain this a little more, but Django has um, it has a, a project entity, which is like your main project and then apps. Okay, so you have one project, which is which is essentially your your main application. In our case, it's our real estate application, but it's called a project. And then inside that you have apps like we're going to have a listings app for for our property listings. We're going to have a um, uh, realtors app for our realtors. Okay, so stuff like that. And I'm going to explain more of that as we move along. Now, the command that we're interested in here is start project. Okay, so that's going to create a project for us. So let me clear this out and let's run Django dash admin. Uh, and we want to run start project and I'm going to call I'm just going to call it BTRE and then just put a dot for the current directory and let's run that and then up here you'll see what the, what it's created it created a BTRE folder with some files and I'm going to go over these files in the next video but it also created a manage.py now this manage.py we're never going to touch this code here this this is basically um, the tool we're going to use now instead of Django admin Okay, it, it has actually if we do Python and you always need to run it with Python. So Python manage dot pi help. You'll see a lot of the same commands that Django admin has, only it's more localized to this project. So we're always going to use manage dot pi when doing like migrations um, run server. We'll run our Python server. Uh, create creates uh, super user will create a user for our admin area. So we're going to be using manage.py quite a bit. Okay, so now I want to um, address something that that mostly has to do with if you're using VS code. So you can see this little pop up down here. Linter pilot is not installed. So you may have some issues if you use the linter. Uh, because it doesn't always recognize your virtual environment. So you might get like import errors because it thinks that Django isn't installed because it's looking at your global environment um, to fix this. What usually works is you want to open up your command palette with sh uh, shift command P or shift control P and you want to go to uh, or search for Python. And you want the select interpreter. okay? and in that interpreter, you should have your V your in virtual environment. And that's what you want to use. So I'm going to choose that. And you should also be in your virtual environment here or in your your command line, whatever you're using. All right. And then once you do that, you can go ahead and click install here if you want. You can also disable it, but I'm going to click install. And now the, the linter should only be installed in my virtual environment. And also notice up here we have a special VS code config for the settings and the Python path is now pointed to our virtual environment Python path okay, or location. So now our linting should work correctly even if we're in our virtual environment. 
All right, so I'm going to clear that up. And now if I open up a Python file, I'm just going to open this up. And now you shouldn't get that pop up again. If you do, that means that you haven't selected the correct interpreter, your V, your virtual environment interpreter. All right, which should create this settings file that I just showed you. I know it can get a little complicated. Um, if you're having trouble, you can you can post in the Q&A and either myself or someone else else can try to help you. Uh, but I would suggest doing a, a quick Google search and you'll probably find the answer. It's there's there's a lot of information about this. Now, the last thing I want to do here is just initialize a Git repository. So I would highly recommend that you use Git version control. I'm not going to be doing my commits and stuff on screen. Um, and you guys can do, you know, commit whenever you want, but I would suggest using it. So if you don't have Git installed, you can either you can go to git scmcom I believe, or dot org. Uh, just search for Git and then uh, or you can use like homebrew or if you're on Linux, you can use your package manager or whatever and then just do a Git init. Okay, so that'll initialize a Git repository um, and then let's create a new file in the root here called dot Git ignore. Okay, and what this does, I know a lot of you guys know this, but what this does is it allows you to add stuff that you don't want to be pushed to your Git repository. Uh, let's see, what does this say? Has too many active changes. I don't, I don't want to see that. Um, but yeah, so whatever you put here won't be pushed to um, the repository. Now, when you're dealing with a new framework, it can be kind of difficult to know what you're supposed to push and what you're not. So what I would recommend doing is using an awesome website called gitignore.io, And basically you can just pass in the name of a framework or, or anything at all. Um, and it will give you like a default git ignore file. So let's say Django. It even has a little pop up. And you can search multiple ones as well, but let's just search for Django and it gives us kind of a default um, Git ignore file that we can use. So I'm just going to grab this. We're going to copy this and go over and paste that in. And these are just comments. We can get rid of these. Okay. now one thing I'm going to add here, I'm going to get rid of this as well. I mean, you can keep the credits if you want, but I'm going to get rid of all the comments. Um, but one thing I'm going to add here is the virtual environment because I have that in in this this file or in this folder. So I don't want that being pushed. So I'm going to put V Venv or whatever you called that folder. Um, you should also put in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And I'm just going to do my initial commit here, but I'm not going to like I said, I'm not going to be doing all my commits on camera. So I'm just going to say git add all and get commit and I'm just going to say initial uh, we'll just say initial commit. Okay, so that's now pushed to my local repository. All right, and we're going to be using git at the end to actually deploy to push to DigitalOcean or, or to GitHub and then pull to DigitalOcean. So you, you definitely want to get get installed. All right, so that's it. Uh, in the next video, we're going to go through some of these files here and talk about what they are, what they do, and I will see you then.